Chevrolet found a new way to make 67 happen. Chevrolet is happening. 80 minutes of uninterrupted stereo tape. Stereo radio, AM and FM, AM and PM. It happens in Chevrolet. By late 1964, Chevrolet was designing their answer to the infamous Ford Mustang. This process began with the XPA 36 design study that would produce scale models that didn't run out of artistic materials such as clay, Two-dimensional drawings must be translated into three-dimensional clay models. In the case of the XP836, it is decided to go to a full-size clay mock-up. Balsa wood. While this is going on, mock-ups of parts and components are fitted into a wooden framework of the f car And fiberglass. Full-scale fiberglass model. It won't run, but it looks enough like the real thing to fool an expert. When this process was complete in the winter of 1965, the potential drivetrains were tested in Chevy 2 X-Car Novas. At the same time, Fisher Body was creating sheet metal tooling that would utilize sheet metal modeling techniques for the coaches that they would supply to Chevrolet. When these processes were refined and readied for test manufacture, the program was tasked with the hand building of the first working prototypes. Prototypes that do run are next on the schedule. Time for the showdown. This process would ultimately create 49 working prototypes for the F-Car manufacturing platform, the first Chevrolet Camaros. These cars would be a landmark achievement and spark the longest and fiercest rivalry to ever come out of Detroit, the Ford Mustang versus the Chevrolet Camaro. Camaro, the new car that's something else, something you've never seen before in a driving machine. N100013, the gear and axle test car, was delivered on May 31st, 1966, as Fisher Body subcontracted coach DD-16D. Like all F-Body pilot prototypes at Norwood, it started its hand-built assembly in consecutive VIN number order as the 13th build of the engineering study in a nondescript World War II shipping building at the Norwood, Ohio Chevrolet plant. This facility was chosen because of security and upper management's desire to keep this secret project outside the prying eyes of the public and the press. One of one on Fleet and Special Order 5A-26 made by manufacturing gear and axle. It carried model number 12667. This red on black convertible was the fifth pilot prototype convertible ever built. N100013 was hand built utilizing components marked handmade, pilot, or prototype and was required to be received by supervisor in charge, Claire Caswell, at the Milford Proving Grounds. By June 14th of 1966, for rigorous gear and axle testing under the auspices of gear and axle pilot reliability audits. These reliability audits were done on site at the Milford Proving Grounds, as well as off site. It was important to keep this prototype testing and audit process under wraps from the prying eyes of the public because it was ongoing prior to the official announcement of the car to the press. These cars were tested under driving conditions that were very rigorous and extreme, then torn apart and checked for wear and reliability. New or different components were added or substituted and the process began yet again. The idea was to create real world conditions that could possibly cause failure. I think the big thing about the Camaro is its rotability. You feel a real sense of positive control with this car. It does what you want it to, when you want it to. These weaknesses would affect the bottom line through warranty and quality issues. And these weaknesses were to be dealt with pre-production to the best of their abilities. The off-site reliability audits were conducted during the middle portion of July of 1966 
Among notable imperfections gleaned from these audits was the necessity of traction bars on the rear differential and cocktail shakers installed upon the convertibles. General Motors shipping records show number 13 being returned to corporate zone zero, where it was used as a company promotional vehicle shortly thereafter, before being sold to the first owner in March of 1967. This first owner was Tom Kinkalar, and he purchased the vehicle 10 months after the birth of N100013. As was typical with engineering test cars, the prototype was equipped with a drivetrain that was capable of being warranted via a dealer work order. The original Vintag was then engraved in the absence of non-existent regular production protector plate. That's where our story takes on a personal flair. Tom Kinkalar would have number 13 service locally in Waukegan, Illinois over the years. His personal mechanic, Tom Roos, would jokingly mark the serial number line of his auto repair orders for the car, Abyss. They would become friends and Roos would purchase the car from Kinkalar on August 28, 2002. Tom Roos would begin the journey to document the car for others' enjoyment almost immediately. He documented the handmade pilot and prototype parts and went to great lengths to save every imaginable piece of the car. This was prior to the creation of Pilot Car Registry and Tom always struggled to obtain the factory documentation for its provenance, as well as the expert involvement that would prove necessary. Fast forward the clock to March of 2015, when logistics expert and lead archivist of Pilot Car Registry, Ms. Jamie Schwartz, obtained an ownership confirmation of N100013 utilizing law enforcement databases. At that point, the founder of Pilot Car Registry, Logan Lawson, enlisted the cooperation of his volunteers and personally verified the prototype in person. Armed with subject matter expertise and vintage photos for presentation to Tom Roos, the two quickly became close friends. This friendship would lead Roos to once say to me, I want the boy to own the car someday. Unfortunately, Tom was diagnosed with cancer in the summer of 2016. A phone call from his wife, Jackie, ensued, and Tom's desire to pass curatorship to Pilot Car Registry and its youthful founder, Logan Lawson, was accomplished. N100013, the gear and axle prototype, was adoringly loved by two owners before being reunited with its factory provenance and vintage documentation by the organization devoted to the research and curation of this pilot prototype program of General Motors Pilot Car Registry. It underwent a comprehensive new old stock restoration utilizing only original General Motors parts from the time period, a virtually impossible feat. It stands as one of the most historically significant handful of surviving examples of the F-Car Pilot Prototype, a car that we all know and love so well today, the Chevrolet Camaro.